night may be long and the dark may be deep, but the answers are there to be found. Whether it's the normal, the abnormal, or the paranormal, you're in the right place. Let's go beyond reality. It's Wednesday on the West, Thursday on the East. Many of you are stuck somewhere in between. Welcome to Beyond Reality Radio with me, Jason Hawes, and the always awesome J.V. Johnson. Now, you know there's no question whatsoever that I can see your bold spot. I mean, that's probably intentional, right? Um, Mach 3 Turbo is uh, yeah, yeah. intentional. I, I mean, I shaved that thing. Hair just gets in the way. The question is, can you see mine? I'm getting a little self-conscious about it. Can, can you see, see it? You? Look. Wow, can I? Can that's you? Like, yeah. Right? It, yeah, I could draw a bullseye on that thing. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was afraid you what were What happened? It, it was totally different last night. Yeah. I think that spray-on it, stuff came out. Well, that's it. I washed the spray-on stuff out. Yeah, <laughs> It doesn't last forever. I thought it la- would last for at least a week. I guess it doesn't. Um, hey, welcome to the program. You know, we, we've got a pretty interesting show for you tonight. We bring people who identify as witches and practice witchcraft on the show quite a bit. But our guest tonight, Sabrina Scott, is not only a witch who practices witchcraft, but she's also an advanced degree holder, a master's degree holder in environmental studies and a Ph.D. candidate. So she combines academics with her witchcraft. And uh, that's kind of an interesting combination. That's what we're going to talk about tonight. Yeah, and she not just that, but she's also an artist. She's a writer and so much more. So we're going to be talking with her, and it's going to be an interesting subject. Tomorrow night, we've got Bill Phillips on. He's the author of Signs from the Other Side. So make sure you tune in, because I think that that's going to be a great show as well. Yeah, anytime we talk about contacting the other side, when people are looking to make contact with lost loved ones or family members or whatever it happens to be, friends, um, it's always fascinating, heartbreaking, inspiring, tear-jerking, and uh, maybe even sometimes uh, it'll put a smile on your face. But it's certainly a range of emotions when we talk about that topic. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, you're bouncing all over with that. And also just the connection part can, yeah, like you said, it can bring a smile uh, to your face as well. So I don't know. Yeah. But did, anyway, what? I just I have to talk about this for a second because this is unbelievable to me. What is this, the hair uh, thing again? <laughs> no, 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 no. This is um, a, a woman um, living uh, in Singapore, actually, went to the doctor's. Uh, because she had an, she had what she thought was an eye infection. Her eyes were kind of pussing up, and or one of the eyes, I guess, it was pussing up, and it was painful. And she went in for the to to have the doctor look at it, and as the doctor was looking at it, he noticed a leg sticking out of wait, wait, a leg, not like, like a leg, human leg, no, an, <laughs> an, an insect leg, what? sticking oh. out of you know that little gap between your eye and the corner the inside corner of yeah, your eye the, the one that always gets like the hard little grit in it yep so he, he pulled it out it was a bee he what? found four bees living inside her eye Wait. they were living off of her tears because they primarily survive on sweat in the in the in the, in the uh, sweat from the tear glands was was feeding them now these but are those little sweat get... bees, those little little not like honey bees, but little sweat bees. Sweat bees. I gotta look them up. Yeah. What? yeah. Sweat bees? They're sweat bees? They're not aggressive. Um they 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 can yeah, sting. Except they can climb into your eyeball. And, but apparently she had been outside doing something and uh, the, some of these sweat bees are flying around her and she must have had one on maybe more than one at a time. I don't know how she got four in there, on her hand and went and rubbed her eye and pushed it in there. Uh and they were living in there for weeks embedded in her eye. All right, first off, I've never heard of sweat bees. And, of course, I type in sweat bees, and it's instantly the thing that comes up is sweat bees in I. <laughs> right, exactly. This is quite a story. Um, oh, my gosh. Man. Fortunately, you know, there's no permanent damage or anything, but, it, uh, you know, it gives me the... the well, there's traumatizing yeah, damage. That's permanent. The little heebie-jeebie things, uh, you know, that you get that shiver down your spine when you think about it. It's oh, kinda, my God, it's disgusting. Yeah, really disgusting. But and anyway, how, how do they get in there without you knowing? Is oh, it when you're asleep? I, well, with her, she was outside doing stuff and she must have had him on her hand and went and rubbed her eye that's the only thing they could think of and kind of pushed him right in there and didn't even realize it i just i find yeah. that so i mean i i get a little gnat flies in my eye and oh, i know the world the world comes right. to a stop right right yeah as i'm like you know throwing a fit and everything but yeah. my gosh that's just that's traumatizing it really is it is it's traumatizing just to read about it let alone have it happen to you so well it's funny because the other day i i went in uh it's like one o'clock in the morning or whatever i went into my son's room and all his blankets were on the floor and everything was gone uh, off of his bed and uh i was like well, i had no idea so I, I picked him back up i covered him back up i went to bed i got up in the morning i go Log, why were all your blankets and everything all over uh, on the floor? He goes, Dad, I was going to bed, and a spider tried to climb in my ear. 
in his ear. I go, in your ear? He goes, Dad, he tried to climb in my ear. He goes, and I smacked him away, and he went on my blankets. He goes, so I threw everything off. <laughs> so, so, I mean, it's trauma. When you're asleep, you, you don't know what's going to happen. So that's why I was wondering if those things got on her when she was asleep. Well, I not that, not that I want to swap spider stories, but yesterday when I was in the studio here working, I saw this giant black mass moving across the floor, and from the distance, I couldn't figure out what the heck it was. And I went over there, and it was this very large... I don't know what kind of... Like wolf spider? It must have been. I don't even know. But it was big enough that I could see it from quite a distance crawling across the floor. And I promptly squished it. And even the squishing process was crunchy and gross. And, oh, uh, gosh. I, so. Well, it, it's... <laughs> and, and not to keep this whole story going, but <laughs> last night I'm laying on the couch and just watching TV. And uh, one of my sons is in the chair next to me. And there's a spider running across full oh, throttle oh, on yeah. the ceiling. Just a full, full full throttle. And I said, I said to my son, I go, hey... So that thing, man, he's just hauling all over up there. And this thing has the whole ceiling to go on. Well, what does he do? He walks over and he walks above me and he drops. Uh, of course he does. And it's like, come on. He said, this is I... the reason why the wife wants me to save them and put them outside. But this is no. the reason why mm. I kill them. No, nope. Because saw... you know what? It's, 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 they're attacking me. If you, if you have the whole ceiling and you decide to drop on me, then you're looking for a battle. He saw a nice shiny landing pad. I mean, I mean it's like you walking into the living From, room and and there's four couches there and you decide to run and jump on me. We're going to throw hands. He, yeah, I would expect so. I mean, from that, from his angle, from his perspective, perspective he saw a nice shiny landing pad. Well, I'm and he was or, down or a really big meal. <laughs> so, but. Anyway, so we've got a great show lined up. As we mentioned, Sabrina Scott will be joining us. She'll be talking about not just what it, it means to be a witch with an environmental studies background, um, also also an artist and a writer, but she'll be talking about her graphic novel called novel called Witch Body. Witch Body. So. Yeah. And, and you can check that out at witchbody.com. That's right. All right. So if you haven't yet, head over to facebook.com slash beyond reality radio. Like that Facebook page for us. Then head to beyondrealityradio.com where you can find all the stations we are on. You can also download the free smartphone apps, which allow you to listen live, catch past shows all on the go. Or any night we're live, just click the Listen Live button right there and uh, listen to the show from the website. If you download it or you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do subscribe at iTunes and uh, just rate it for us. It helps us and pushes it forward. We're going to take a quick break. A lot more to come. You listen to Jason and JV Beyond Reality Radio. We'll be back after this. Scaricon New England, the fan convention for all things pop culture, horror, and paranormal is almost here. June 7th through the 9th at the Sheridan Hotel and Conference Center, Framingham, Massachusetts. Scaricon brings an amazing group of celebrities, including Cassandra Peterson. You know her as Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. Elvira. Heather Langenkamp, Amanda Wiss, and Lisa Wilcox from the Nightmare on Elm Street films. Plus, a 40th anniversary cast reunion and screening of the cult classic Phantasm. Phantasm. And many more. Scaricon also features panel discussions film screenings, great vendors, and parties. It's a weekend of fun from start to finish. For more information, visit Scaricon.com or check us out on Facebook. Use the promo code BRR at checkout to save 25% on your admission. That's Scaricon.com. Scaricon.com. Scaricon New England is being held June 7th through the 9th in Framingham, Massachusetts. Visit the website today. Use promo code BRR with your ticket purchase to save 25% on admission. Welcome back to the program. It's Beyond Reality Radio. Jason and JV, Sabrina Scott is our guest tonight. Sabrina is a witch, an artist, a writer. She holds a master's degree in environmental studies. She's pursuing a PhD as well. She's got a book out. It's a graphic novel called Witch Body. Uh, Her website is the title of the book, witchbody.com. Um, she does tarot readings, magical consultations, magical lessons, teaching, spell work, spell kits, so much more. And uh, we're very pleased and honored to have Sabrina on the program. Sabrina, welcome to Beyond Reality Radio. Thank you so much for having me. Sabrina. So you, um, you're in Toronto, right? I am, yeah. Okay, just our neighbor to the north here. Um, Jason's not too far away in Rhode Island, and I'm in upstate New York, so kind of a hot, hop, skip, skip, and a jump over a big uh, lake. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure if I had tried really hard, I could probably see you guys across the lake. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Well, anyway, welcome to the program. It's really a pleasure to have you here. I want to start by uh, kind of figuring out what your definition of a witch is, because we've had a lot of folks on the program who have said they are practicing witches, practice witchcraft, but there's always a bit of a difference in their definition of what that means, or maybe their discipline, or whatever it happens to be. What's it all mean for you? Oh, man, no, I think you're completely right. You'll get as many answers 
uh, from people as there are, I think, people who practice witchcraft. But for me, the key aspect of what I do is that it's very much about building relationships with non-humans, with spirits, with objects, with the earth, all of that fun stuff. But also, crucially, I see it as an act of directing your will towards something in order to create change. Direct, That's the main part for me. So, so what it really boils down to here is being a witch, practicing witchcraft, is directing your will to affect change in some fashion. Yeah, that's the short version for me, but uh, also for me, we don't always do that alone, right? So we're usually collaborating with candles, plants, stuff like that. So not many people actually do magic completely by themselves. So I see magic as actually the uniting of more than one will, shall we say, to affect change. Well, and a lot of times more than one person as well, correct? Exactly. Yeah, completely. Because there is the belief that the more, the more, of course, give off that more energy and and are yeah. able to make things happen uh, that much more often. So what you're saying exactly. then, and what you're yeah. saying there, Jason, and I'm assuming that what you're agreeing to, Sabrina, is that uh, uh, as you add people to this process and work together, it compounds the energy or the effect. It can definitely. If everyone is on the same page. Definitely. If you're not on the same page, everything can go a bit uh, sideways. Now, are you a uh, member of a coven? Is that is that still something that someone who considers themselves to be a witch does? <laughs> you know what? A lot of people do. Uh, I tried that out a few times, and it just didn't quite resonate with me. So I tend to practice more or less alone, but I do collaborate with, you know, my ancestor spirits, the dead, saints, stuff like that, and sometimes my cats try to get involved too. <laughs> <laughs> Pesky cats, but uh, but honestly, that with witchcraft, it's really it's taken that that turn where a lot of it is. Even though a lot of people do practice together, the majority of the people now go off and do their own thing solo. Correct? Definitely. Yeah, you got it. Let's talk a little bit about some of the other things you do before we get into this in too much detail. Uh, you are a writer, you're an artist, you're a tarot card reader. Which of all of these things, including witchcraft, uh, came first for you? Oh my God, that's a great question. I think, you know what? I think what came first was my art. Like I've always drawn, I've always written, so I've always been a poet, but for as long as I can remember, I've drawn pictures. So I think that's probably the main thing, but I've also always had this kind of animist spirituality where I felt really deeply for plants and animals and the earth and for, you know, the odd book on my table or whatever. You know, if someone threw a book across the room, I would feel so bad for it. And I see that as a very animist way of being in the world. And so no one really taught me that. That's kind of always been how I felt, and so that to me is like the where my witchcraft kind of came from. No, did root. you grow up in a family that practiced witchcraft, or did you grow up in a religious family by any means? It was kind of a bit of a mix. So my dad was like, you guys are crazy. <laughs> and my mom was a spiritualist. And so I would go along with her to uh, the church sessions, they would call it. And so I went to my first seance when I was eight years old and got to see possession and energy healing and something called table tipping, which is when a really heavy wooden table kind of dances around the room, animated by spirits. That's kind of the point of it, is to prove the existence of spirits. So I got to see all of that stuff from an incredibly young age, and for that I'm super, super grateful because it means that I haven't had to spend my life gaining belief in something. It's kind of already already there. We're going to go to break here in just a couple of minutes. And before we do, tell us uh, what the book is. It's a graphic novel. The name is Witch Body. What does the title mean? And what's, what's it about? Oh my God. Great question. <laughs> so it's a very silly play on words, I guess. It's kind of the first obvious answer. Actually, I'm shocked no one has even asked me this question before. <laughs> so it's kind of fun to talk about it. But for me, witchcraft is that collaboration between more than one body. So I've got a human body, but I see plants as also having bodies. The earth has its own body. Like the land here in Toronto has its own body. And so 
magic is this collaboration between multiple bodies. And so any witch who is practicing, there's never just kind of one body there. We're always, to be a witch is to always be in relationship and to always be in this network of many bodies kind of collaborating and working together to create magic. So the title of the book is supposed to be a bit of a reference to that philosophy that I try to talk about in the book itself. And it's really about feeling the energy off of everything and and taking yeah. that in and just having respect for that. Exactly. Yeah, you got it. And so to me, part of what's at stake there is I think that we can behave a little bit more ethically in the world if that's how we view things. I think environmental destruction would be, you know, it'd be a bit of a different story if everyone saw the earth as a being rather than just this kind of inert thing to use and abuse. And this so big the rock book also that, does, yeah. Exactly, yeah. So the book does have this kind of ethical component at, at the back. Like, it's not in your face, but it's definitely there somewhere in the background kind of creeping. All right, so let's take a break, um, and we're going to have a lot more to talk about with Sabrina. We're also going to take your phone calls later in the program. Sabrina has offered to do tarot card readings for people. We'll do that sometime during the second hour of the show. Uh, you might, might want to jot down the phone number, 844-687-7669. Sabrina's website for her book is witchbody.com. It's not it's witch, W-I, not W-H, witchbody.com. The name of her book, it's a graphic novel, and it is called Witchbody. And again, head over to Facebook.com slash Beyond Reality Radio. Like that Facebook page for us. Then head to BeyondRealityRadio.com. You can find all the stations we air on across the country. That list is constantly being updated with new stations being added all the time. You can also download the free smartphone apps and much more. You listen to Jason JV, Beyond Reality Radio. We'll be back after this. Did you know that online retailers like Amazon have constant deals that can save you money on the things you buy every day? It's no joke. Save 40%, 50%, even 80% on great products, and all you have to do is know about them. Noodle Shark is the way to be alerted when something good is coming your way. Noodle Shark is the social media page that lists great deals that not only save you money, but give you the deals before anyone else has them. All you have to do is find Noodle Shark on Facebook. Search it as The Noodle Shark. That's The Noodle Shark, because you deserve to save too. Become a shark and save welcome back to the program it's beyond reality radio with jason and jv thanks to all the radio stations carrying the program around the country we appreciate them being on our affiliate list being part of the affiliate family as that list continues to grow you know we yeah i remember back in the days when you and i were kind of i don't know were we were we fooling around when we started i'm not even sure how Yeah, because i just finished doing the show ghost hunters i i had just uh pulled it from nbc and uh you and I were like, oh, you know, I, I got to do something. I can't just sit around on the couch and watch TV all day long now. So we decided, oh, let's just start screwing around with the doing an online radio show. Yep. And, well, you remember, I mean, we kept on getting all I these offers there. from other radios. Yeah, yeah you were there. <laughs> um, we kept on getting all these offers to do uh, to you know do a radio show on their network. But it's just we wanted to wait. And I think it was the best thing we did because yeah, I, we waited and Entercom and Westwood won and and it's been a great relationship ever since. I agree, and it was. Um, it, it's really, it's really. Uh, we have a lot of pride in being part of, a part of the Westwood One Radio Network. Yeah, the only thing is, we can't be like we we had no no holes barred. When we were yeah, doing the there show were no before. filters now, before. Now we're we're on air, so we got to be a little more reserved. Yeah, we, there was um, there was there there were no filters before. You know, we've been you and I've been toying with the idea of bringing back. Uh, just a p- little, you know, online podcast, whatever it is that's not on the yeah, radio. Like we can take with, the filters off. With now that I'm going to be doing a, another TV show, I mean, yeah, we, we'll definitely be doing doing something else. We'll throw something together during the days. All right, so tonight we're talking with Sabrina Scott. Sabrina is a witch, an artist, a writer. She also holds a master's degree in environmental studies, working on her PhD. Her book is called Witch Body. It's a graphic novel. Her website is Witch Body. That's witch with an I, witchbody.com. And uh, again, Sabrina, thanks for being here. I want to ask you about um, the witchcraft component. And and I, I'm never really sure how to say this other than and the fact that you are a witch. Um what what drew you to that? What what was it that it made it c- catch your attention and move in that direction and start making that part of your life? Oh man, great question. So, you know what? It's something I barely think about anymore. Just I've been doing it for so long. So, I'm just about thirty, but I've been practicing for twenty years. So, 
I think part of it for me was, to be honest with you, growing up in the suburbs. I grew up in Colorado <laughs> in a, like a new suburb, and so it was kind of half development, half grassy plains. And so it was a place that was kind of dealing with its own relationship to the built environment and the wild. And so, you know, I couldn't drive. I was a kid. You're kind of stuck. And so I had to find a connection to the world somehow and a connection to the earth and plants and spirituality. And I had to find that exactly where I was. I couldn't go anywhere else. And so I've always been interested in spirituality and religion and witchcraft just, it really resonated with me. There was this big bump in the 90s when I was growing up where everyone was into it. And so there's another bump happening right now. So it's really interesting to see like who is going to kind of stay on the wagon after it becomes less popular again, which I'm sure will happen. But I think for me, I just really resonated with the idea that you can work with normal everyday objects and the environment wherever you happen to be, whether that is the suburbs, whether that's, you know, the grassy plains, whether that is a big city, and connect with exactly where you are and connect more with yourself in order to affect change, to bring some of your desires into being, and not even just in a superficial way, but in a very deeply internally transformative way. Like all of that stuff together, I really, really, really loved. And it's very big with just being one with with everything, being one with the universe. Yeah. And, and I think that that's important. I, I, a lot of us have, a lot of people out there have really lost that connection to yeah. whether it be nature or just the universe in general or one another these days and it's definitely one of those things that that help bring you back to it and try to get you to connect with everything yeah it's so true you know like i have um an instagram account it's immateriality with an i and i recently did a poll of my followers in my instagram story asking them if their spirituality and it's mostly witchy people who follow me if their spirituality you know made them feel like if they feel alone in that or if they feel connected and I think around 75% of them said that they felt alone. And it was because they lived in places where, you know, people can't relate to them spiritually. But interestingly, the people who felt connected, it's because of the Internet as well, because they could connect with like-minded people who might not be next door, but, you know, were accessible to them somehow via social media and, like, hashtags and all of that stuff. So... I think we're at a really interesting turning point right now when it comes to community, loneliness, and spirituality, and how we're kind of dealing with all of that stuff in the age of the Internet. Well, and the fact that you bringing that up, and I 100% agree with that, just for the fact when I started investigating the paranormal, there there was really no Internet. There wasn't there, mm. there wasn't out there, and to find anybody else who was involved, were there cars? I'm trying to remember. There, there, there were cars, <laughs> but but they were like Model A's yeah, and okay, things like. Gotcha. No, but uh, but finding anybody else out there with similar interest was was hard and awkward. But of course, the internet opened up all these new doors where you were able to now connect with all these groups all around the world who had similar interest, and yeah. so it it has it has really allowed people to connect but also it's kind of taken away that whole personal connection of face to face and it so it's it's a weird combination where it's allowed you to connect but it's taken away the personalness i completely agree with you and i do worry a little bit about that myself as well i think there is something really really special about face to face especially when i teach magic and when i teach those kind of spiritual skills like i do a lot of Skype and kind of online distance consultation sessions, and those always go really, really, really well. But, you know, there is also not really a substitute for teaching people in person where everyone just can feel instantly the, the energy in the entire room shift. Well, or even the, even the sensation off of somebody's voice, uh, and that's another thing. Right down to yeah. my sons will be talking with their girlfriends uh, through text, and uh, they'll be like, well, you talked with mom all the time when you were, yeah, but we actually talked. We, we were on the phone. We could hear each other. We could hear the emotion in each other's voice. It wasn't just text messaging. And, again, that just leads back to that whole connection but disconnection. 
definitely. Yeah, and like with something like magic that, you know, those like sounds something like sound, like voice, that there's so much that's communicated energetically that way if if magic is partly a way of learning to notice energetically what's going on with ourselves and with others. There's so much that's lost when we're all just isolated on the internet. I sound really old right now. <laughs> Sabrina, <laughs> Sabrina, I want to oh, get I, back. I got you beat, so don't worry about it. I want to get back to the, the discussion of what role rit, wit, witchcraft plays in your life. Now, you said totally, that, yeah. um, you know, you were kind of in a rural area. You were looking for things to do. This became attractive to you based on some of the things that you believed and you were looking for. Um, and as you started to practice witchcraft and, and start to identify as a witch, how did it change your life and how does it shape your life today? Man, oh, asking all the great questions. <laughs> <laughs> so you know what? It's it's interesting because I really credit my going for a master's in environmental studies to the fact that I practice witchcraft. Like I think I learned environmental activism from doing witchcraft for so long, and that might sound like a bit bizarre, but when you're doing this energetic practice that is so based on connecting with the earth and connecting with plants and animals and all of that stuff. Like your vantage point on in the environment and ethics and all of that stuff, like to me it just kind of completely shifted over time. So it's definitely influenced my entire life. Like I would say that witchcraft is the most important part of my life and all of my work kind of is around that, whether that's academic work, you know, environmental philosophy work, comics, teaching, whatever it is that I'm doing, it all comes back to that core of that belief in witchcraft. But also, like, it's not just like a, you know, weekend thing that I do. Like, right. it, it encapsulates everything. It completely does. It changes. does it require a? T- I, and I don't even. You know, sometimes I use these words, and I'm not exactly sure if it's the right <laughs> word. But does it require your attention every day? Do you use it every day? Do you wake up? Is there a routine that you go through yeah. that involves witchcraft that to start your day? You know what? Like for me, witchcraft is like a way of being. Like it's a to use a fancy philosophy word, like it's an ontology. Like so, the really simple way of explaining that is it's just my reality, and so it's not like a hat I put on and take off. It's just in how I see everything. It's how I notice the energy in the room. It's how I notice the energy when I leave my apartment and walk out into the world. It's how I notice you know, when I teach how my students are interacting with each other energetically and then how do I use my magical skills to kind of, you know, create a more safe container for that and curb some of the folks who are maybe, you know, a bit agitated in a way that I don't necessarily want them to be. So it's stuff like that. But I also maintain an altar space and I always am giving offerings of fresh flowers, water, sometimes food, just to kind of keep my relationship with the spirits in a way that I feel good about, you know, because like no one want, no one likes that friend who only calls you when they want something. Mm, yeah, I know those. You know friends, what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you have? <laughs> Everyone uh, hates that person. Can you? Can, Why are you looking at me when you said that? I, yeah, I <laughs> what at me. was that about? No. <laughs> Sabrina, do you do you uh, practice witchcraft for the benefit of others, or, or and can people do that, or does it have to be something that it, that you're that is internal and it something that you're practicing for yourself in one form or another? You know what? I think it can be both. Um, Over the last few months, I've actually started taking on a lot more spell work for people, but I don't accept all the requests that I get. Like, I'll always start with a consultation, kind of feel it out, and I have refused people based on, you know, like either feeling like their request was not going to go well like that I could achieve the results that they wanted, but I knew it was like, you know, going to bite them in the ass at the end of the day, or if it just felt like unethical to me for some kind of reason of my own, depending on the circumstances. But no, I definitely do spell work for other people. No problem. And and I'm going to ask the same question I asked a minute ago, but just change it a little bit. Um, I asked you about your morning routine with and how witchcraft plays a role in that. But what about at night? And you know, if someone was is a very religious person, they might pray before they go to bed. Is that is something yeah. similar to that part of your routine? Yeah, you know what? For me, it's um, it's more around protection based work usually. If I'm going to do something right before I go to bed, so it's 
more of like a visualization of a big giant fear around, you know, my apartment, the house that I live in, my neighborhood, to kind of envision everything being safe, you know, because if my neighbor's house burns down, I'm also probably going to be, you know, KO'd in that situation. So I want everything around me to just be safe and protected. So it'll usually be something along those lines that I'll end my day with. Um, And I'll always have candles burning when I'm at home, always incense burning. And I do see those as intentional offerings to the spirits that I work with. Uh, Sabrina, this is a a short segment, and I want to go back to the question I'd asked earlier when I said what does or how does the practice of witchcraft uh, shape your life? And you talked about some of the more, um, what I would say, strategic things that have happened in your life and career moves, that kind of thing. Um, But how does it affect you day to day? Do do you notice a difference in in a positive or a negative way uh, from these things you practice? Or does it only affect the bigger picture things? sure how to answer that because I'm not too sure exactly what you're getting at. Um, I guess uh, let me let me let me try to ask it in a different <laughs> way. And I, I don't mean no, it's fine. I don't mean this to be in any way um, disrespectful. But like, no, does be it, blunt, be blunt. <laughs> does it help you? Like, do you do you find money in the street because of this? Uh, do you uh, cure illnesses that you you wake up you know, or you're and you're sick, but you can cure an illness? I mean, what type of yeah. immediate and practical things? Uh, right. Does this affect, or is it more of a of a big picture thing? Amazing. Okay, thank you so much for clarifying. I really appreciate that. And don't worry, I'm totally not offended by <laughs> okay. by that question at all. I think witchcraft it arose from this practical need. If you look at it historically, it is about getting stuff done, healing people, finding partners, making money, work, all of that stuff. And so, yeah, it definitely has done that type of thing for me as long as I've been practicing. Um, You know, like if I am in some kind of need of, you know, a bit of a cash flow increase, I do work around that and it tends to manifest quite quickly. And at the same time, you know, if I am feeling sick, (laughs) like I'm able to use those type of magical visualization skills in order to calm my body down and help move through that. So it it is very much all of those things. Um, and it's also, you know, I've had some really negative experiences with people in the past. I'm sure we all have. And, you know, I've definitely done workings before where I was like, I don't want to see this person ever again. You know, I want this person out of my neighborhood. Don't, like, move away from my area, please. Stuff like that, just to keep myself safe. So like it is super practical, you know, like it can be really protective. And I have seen very immediate results in that regard. Like there was a really nasty ex that I had and I did a thing to get him out of my neighborhood and he moved within a month. So, oh, wow. you know, it's, it's very, very practical in that way. And of course the money stuff, I have done that, the love stuff, I have done that, um, health type of stuff. I've done that too, you know, like it is it's incredibly practical, uh, way of living life, I think. It's not just philosophical as much as I do talk about the philosophy of it. Do you th- recommend this for anyone? Is is it is it, or do you have to be a special or a certain type of person to even want to or to be able to make it effective? I think anyone can do it. I do think that uh, some people are going to have a much more natural aptitude for it than others. It's like any skill, you know? Like some people can pick up a pencil and they're just amazing artists without even any training or without trying. And some people have a gift for languages and other people, it might, you know, they might eventually learn language, but it might take like a few years longer to really get it. And I think magic is very much the same thing. I think it's accessible to anyone, but some of us are going to have to try a little bit harder than others in order to get the same results. We've got a really cool show underway here talking with Sabrina Scott. Uh, She's a witch, an artist, and a writer. But tomorrow night, we're going to be talking with Bill Phillips, author of a book called Signs from the Other Side. Um, He's going to be providing a step-by-step guidance that allows readers and people listening to the program tomorrow night to receive afterlife communications for themselves. And he'll be sharing more than 20 
inspiring examples of everyday people who have received messages from the other side. We've had a couple on the program not, not long yes, ago. Yes, we have. And, uh, and they're very touching, touching uh, stories. And then, uh, of course, every Friday is the best of Beyond Reality Radio. Next week, we've got some great shows planned as well. Monday, we've got uh, Gwendolyn Womack, USA Today bestselling author of The Fortune Teller, The Memory Painter, and her new book, The Time Collector. So make sure you tune in and check that one out. Yeah, we've got some great stuff coming up. Um, let's see. Oh, you know what I wanted to tell you? Because this is pretty exciting. If it has anything to do with bees in the eyes, I don't know. No, that was last hour. That was <laughs> yeah. just, I'm so, so traumatized. You saw the movie Terrifier, right? Did we did we talk about this? Or I, we talked about it anyway. I don't know if you had a chance to see it. It's the one with the clown, Arthur oh, yeah, Clown. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, yep. You know what I'm talking Okay, so. Uh, yeah, I mean, that gruesome part. Um, yeah. It's one of the most brutal scenes I've ever seen in the movie. Yeah, there's one scene that just is, you can't, it's one of those that you just can't believe you're seeing it. Isn't he coming to Scarecon? Yeah, that's what, that's the oh, cool news. Did I blow, did I blow that on you? You just blew my punchline, but it's yeah. okay because it's great news. Um, not only is the director writer, Damien Leone, coming to Scarecon, but um, Art the Clown himself, the guy that plays Art the Clown, is coming. That's uh, David Howard Thornton. We've had him on this program before, actually. Yeah. You remember last? He just plays such a creepy clown. You know and I hate clowns, anyways. I just hate them with a passion. So. And, and he is nothing like that character in real person in real life. He, his his personality is so opposite. So that what, that's what makes the character so amazing. Um, but what makes the event at Scaricon so cool is that uh, they're going to dress David up and do the makeup, the full makeup, to make him Art the Clown. And do a full photo op with uh, David Howard Thornton as Art the Clown from the movie Terrifier. As long as he's not walking around doing the things he did in that movie. Oh, my God. It's so so bad. So if, if you've seen the movie or you haven't, uh, check it out on Netflix. I think it's if still there. If you haven't, there. don't watch it with the kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah, do, do not, not yeah. watch it with the kids. Yeah, I recommend you don't watch it with the kids. But anyway, you can meet the folks at uh, Scaricon. It's June 7th through the 9th. Framingham, Massachusetts. Check it out at Scaricon.com. If you haven't yet, head over to Facebook.com slash Beyond Reality Radio. Like that Facebook page for us. And then head to BeyondRealityRadio.com. You can find all the stations we are on across the country. The list is constantly being updated with new stations being added all the time. You can download the smartphone apps and much more. If you haven't yet, subscribe to the show. Uh, we greatly appreciate all the support out there. The show's being downloaded tens of thousands of times a day, and that's all because of you. And uh, we greatly appreciate that. If you uh, can, just take two seconds of your time and rate it for us. Because it helps uh, get the word out there and makes it easier for us. And to, uh, as I said, tonight we're talking with Sabrina Scott. And Sabrina, we're going to be taking some listener calls in just a moment for questions. And then we'll be opening up the phone lines a little bit later. We'll let you know when for uh, tarot card readings. But I want to ask you about this environmental studies degree that you have. Um, yeah. you, you said that your your um, you know practice practice of witchcraft and your belief in that system kind of led you down that path. Um, yeah. What's your goal? As somebody who has an environmental studies degree, what is your goal and what do you do professionally with it, I guess, is the question. <laughs> it's funny because the book itself is kind of about witchcraft as a form of environmental education <laughs> okay. in a way. So I guess that's part of what I'm doing with it. But um I really I asked think... that question in a poor way. I didn't mean to, <laughs> to come out quite like that. I guess what I'm saying is that, um, I mean, are you, do, do you do research on the environment? Do you? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So like, environmental philosophy is a big part of my interest and what I do. And so like to me, it just kind of, again, like touches everything that I do. It's, it's, it's the world we live in, right? So why not be a little bit more informed about the environment, I guess, and that's really, really broad. It's not just plants and all of that type of thing. It's also cities, suburbs, and, you know, everything in between. I think the world I live in is full of electronics and dials and four walls because I never leave this studio, it seems. Um, <laughs> that's also environment, though, right? It, yeah, it sure is. Um, let's go to our phone line. Let's grab a listener question here. This is Rebecca in Florida. Hi, Rebecca. Welcome to the program. Hi. Hey, welcome to the show. Hi. I'm I'm just kind of curious. I'm listening to Sabrina, and she just sounds so intelligent. And um, I actually go along with a lot that she's saying. My question is, like, um, how do you come to what you you see or you feel when you come to say tarot readings or what what not? I mean, how does all that work? I mean, I don't. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to relate it all. That's all. You know. Yeah, definitely. 
I think that's a great question. I think um, it's like learning a language, I think. And so, you know, I think like how I try to explain it to folks who are new to the work is, you know, like, have you ever walked into a room and just instantly had a bad vibe or instantly met someone and just knew you're going to be best friends for a really long time. I think we all have those little flashes of intuition and those flashes of being really in touch with the energy around us, the energy in the room, the energy of someone else. And so when I'm doing like my tarot work for people and my witchcraft consultations and stuff like that, Basically, what I'm doing is just that type of thing, but on a really deep, more thorough level that comes from years and years and years of practice. But it's the same type of feeling that we all have access to, if that makes sense. Fascinating. Yes, it does. Um, I'm just kind of, how do you get to to the detail that you, you do come to at the end of it? It's practice. <laughs> That's just practice, awesome. to be honest it, with you. I, it's I putting in the time. I do. Yeah. So, like, how I explain it to people, too, is like, you don't go to, let's say, like, one hour long Spanish class and then expect to be fluent at the end of it. Like, you might know, like, two words or something. If you're like me, you remember one word. <laughs> but if you go to that class, like, every day for a few years, then eventually you'll get to be able to speak the language. Maybe not as fluently as someone who was born into it, but you'll still have that skill set that you've built over time. And so for me, magic and reading cards and stuff like that is very much the same thing. It's just like building a skill set like anything else. Rebecca, just before I let, before I let you go here, are you uh, Sabrina's sister by any chance? <laughs> no. no, okay, because the way you started the call, usually when one of Jason's relatives call the start, they always say, you know, you're so intelligent or you're so good looking. My relatives call. <laughs> My relatives call. <laughs> uh, thank you for the phone call, Rebecca. We appreciate you listening in Florida. We're talking with Sabrina Scott tonight, which artist writer. Uh, and we're pl- pleased to have her here with us. Uh, Sabrina, we've got a full uh, phone bank of people who oh are looking God. for draw card readings. <laughs> Great. Uh, so we're going to try to take these as we ha- as we continue our discussion. But what do you need from people when we start this process? Okay, so my readings are usually really long. So I'll usually do like hour-long plus readings with folks. So for this, um, I'm just going to do a quick, depending on how I feel, one or three card pull, and then just kind of give a brief overview of what I see. Uh, So just a really, really simple question would be awesome. So like if they were to say, you know, what's my, what's going to happen with my job or something along those lines? Um, Or more specific than that? Yeah, like a really good tarot question is something that is actionable. So what I really love from people, especially for a really, really short reading, is not necessarily questions about, like, what will happen, period, because, you know, you can take actions that will change that. (laughs) So usually what I love, especially for short readings, is what's the best course of action for me or what is your general read on the vibe of situation A, B, or C. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think it does. Yeah. All right. So let's cool. give this a shot. Let's go to, uh, this is Tony in Pennsylvania. Hi, Tony. Welcome to the program. You're on with Sabrina. Hi, Sabrina. Hi, uh, Jace. Uh, Hi, Tony. I'm interested in knowing uh, what my what my future holds. I'm just retired, and I'm not sure what to do with the second half of my life. <laughs> um if it includes something like this, that would be great. I'm trying yeah. to lose some weight, but I'm having a real tough time doing it. No matter what they tell me to do, it just isn't coming off. Well, I'll tell you what, if the tarot cards can answer that problem, I'm, I'm next in line. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> go yeah, ahead, Sabrina. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Well, we'll do our best to see what's going to come through here. Just giving my cards a little shuffle, and I'm reading with the Rider Waite Smith deck for anyone who is curious, which is the most classic, I would say, tarot deck. It's about 100 years old in terms of the imagery and design, and most decks are kind of based off of it. Okay, so I just pulled three cards for you, Tony. And interestingly, with the tarot, when I read cards, I like to look for patterns. And so what I'm seeing here is literally every card is bright yellow. And so in the tarot, the symbolism is crucial. And so yellow tends to represent actually happiness and awesome vibes. 
And so since we're getting that in literally every card that I've drawn for you, what I would really recommend you doing is taking some time to appreciate all of your accomplishments in life. Like what we're seeing is two pentacles cards. We've got the page of pentacles, the nine of pentacles. And in both of these cards, we've got a figure surrounded by pentacles in one card and then the other one just kind of holding it up to his face and gazing at it lovingly. So what I would really recommend for you in this new phase in your life is have a lot of gratitude for the stability that you've been able to accumulate so far. And really, don't take any of that stuff for granted. Like the second that you, you know, forget about it, take it for granted, anything like that, I think that's the second when you'll start to feel much worse than you do now. So that's going to be really, really crucial. And the other thing I'm seeing here is we've got a reverse four of wands. And so I see that as a little bit of a warning. So Four of Wands is very much a card about love and relationships. And so what this is asking you to do is no matter what, please don't isolate yourself. Please remember to cultivate the connections in your life, your relationships, whether you do have anything romantic going on, family, whoever you're close to. It doesn't have to be blood family. can be chosen family. That's totally cool. Make sure that you maintain those connections to people do not isolate yourself no matter what you do because those people are a really big part of the bounty that you've been able to grow for yourself so far. Tony, thank you for the phone call. Um, let's see if we can squeeze one more in here. We've got about, will two minutes do it, um, Sabrina, or do we need more time than that? <laughs> oh, my God. Two minutes is so short. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll, we'll wait till the other side of the break. Um, when you do a tarot card reading, where does the energy come from that affects the cards? So it's a mix of mine and then the person who I'm reading for. So that's why I always tend to shuffle whenever my client is talking or if I'm reading for someone in person, I'll have them shuffle the cards for me so that their energy is firmly embedded into the cards. So I know that the reading is specifically for them and not for me. And when you um, you have a reading face-to-face, are you... Do you get a different kind of energy from the person sitting across the table than you might through a phone reading like this? Um, it's a bit of a different vibe just because I set it up differently. Like we, I make people tea. My cats are jumping on them. <laughs> <laughs> my apartment is really cozy. So, you know, there's a bit of a different uh, ritual to it, I would say, than something just on the phone. But I do definitely have very close relationships with my phone clients as well. So it, it really is whatever works for people. And uh, we've got, again, just a minute here before we, we go to break. Your website um, has a lot of stuff on there. I know that you mentioned the tarot card readings. What else can people find if they go to your website, witchbody.com? Yeah, so I've got some blog posts up there, which just if anyone's interested in reading some of my thoughts on magic and tarot and stuff like that, there's a few little tidbits on there where I talk about daily ritual of everyday life, like getting a coffee every morning for me. That's definitely a favorite ritual. Uh, thinking about, you know, self-love altars and stuff like this, like small little things that can help make these practices, which might sound a little bit abstract to people, a little bit more concrete and grounded in reality. So that's definitely there. And there's also, I hate to plug it, but of course, like booking information, that kind of businessy stuff. Like if you want to book a reading, you can totally do that there. But uh, I do try to make it an informative type of hub for people. That's so how long, thing. let me ask this though. How long does it usually take to become proficient in, in tarot cards? I think it depends on how dedicated someone is to learning and how, how much they practice, how, much, how many readings they're doing, what their spirit connection is like how many decks they read with. Because for me, like, every deck has its own personality. Like, I can read the same card in five different decks and read that a little bit differently. So it's also having the expertise to be able to read more than one deck proficiently and also to be able to choose the right deck for the person you're reading for. So there's so many different factors. So I would say, like, five years at least, I would say, before people should be charging for readings, but that's just my opinion. Um, before we start taking the calls again, Sabrina, I wanted to ask you about your uh, artwork. Um, you know, your your um, art has been uh, talked about in terms of having a rich richness and a sensuous quality, lushness. Tell us a little bit about that work. Yeah, so the work I'm doing lately, it's kind of black and white comic book style stuff, but not exactly the superhero kind of thing. 
Uh, it's, oh man, it's a lot of black and white, a lot of like unusual mixed media type of stuff. I paint with a brush. And so it's, yeah, it's very mixed media. Like this, I use salt, I use wax, I use all this kind of random stuff to create hopefully what are like lush city and natural environments that also look a little bit magical. All right, let's go to, um, this is Jada uh, in Tennessee. Hey, Jada, welcome to the program. Hello. Hi. How are you? Do you have a question for Sabrina? Um, I recently decided to work on taking a path towards my dream job and was just wondering if that was the right path to take or how she sees things working out. Awesome. Simple, great question. I love this kind of question. Can I ask what your dream job is? Um, to be a backup singer. Amazing. Okay. Can, uh, can I just interject here? Jada, why don't you go for a lead vocalist? Why backup? I just out of curiosity. I just don't want to be in the spotlight. Okay. All right. That's fair. All right. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, Sabrina. Okay. So I've actually got a really interesting read here. So... Interestingly, okay, so there's no reversals, which to me shows that you're not blocking anything, which is amazing. So you're completely throwing yourself into this. Great. So the one thing I did do, so I drew one card for to pursue this and one card to not. And what's really, really interesting to me is I'm wondering, like, at what cost is this dream coming for you? Because... The to not pursue it card, I'm getting the Ten of Cups, which is one of the most joyful, happy cards in the deck. We see happy family, kids dancing, lush environment, you know, which is kind of, in a sense, like a business as usual type of card, right? Like it's an awesome, happy card, but it also, you know, at its worst might be a little bit boring, right? So there's something to keep in mind with that. But for the card that I've drawn around actually pursuing it, we've got the six of swords. And so that's actually a much tougher card. So it shows that in order to pursue this dream, there is going to be a lot of sacrifice involved. And so just make sure that you're prepared for that, that you go in knowing that, but also know that If you do pursue this with your full heart, despite the fact that there will be some rough waters for you for a little while, like I do see that for the next little bit, but in the far future, I do see a lot more calmness in this card. This card is very much about transition from point A to point B, and so just know that a part of this process of pursuing your dream, you're also going to have to mourn something. There's a loss that comes along with that too, so as you're celebrating this embrace of your dream and living your best life, make sure that you also take time to, you know, be sad about what you're walking away from. Because as we open up a door, we're also closing one. So just make sure that on this journey, you're able to hold both of those aspects of your reality with kindness as you move forward through, you know, this interesting transition for you. And just make sure also, I've drawn the four of swords, make sure that in this new career hustle, you also take the time to rest. Very important. Good luck. (laughs) Thanks, Jade. Thank you. Thank you, Jade. And I think you should also consider being the lead singer. That's just my opinion on that. All right. Uh, Let's go to, um, let's see, this is Sandy. Sandy is in Missouri. Hi, Sandy. Welcome to the program. You're on with Sabrina. Hi there. Thank you so much for taking my call. Um, I really try to listen to my guides and what they're Mm. telling me. And with the recent changes I've made, I was just wondering if I'm listening properly and following the right path. Okay. Is there any transition in particular that you're thinking about? Just everything in general, basically a move. Okay. Okay. All right. So I'll just pull a few and see what comes up. I feel like there's a bigger story there, but (laughs) we might not have time to fully get into it. Let's see what we've got here. So I'm just turning over the three cards. Okay, interesting. So I've got a question for you. With your move, um, are you more isolated than you were before? Yes. You are. Okay, so how is that going for you? I think I'm going to really enjoy it. Awesome. Okay, wicked. I'm so happy to hear that because what we've got here, so I've got three cards for you. 
the Ten of Swords reversed, a pretty nasty card, the Nine of Pentacles reversed, and the only right-side-up card we have is the Hermit. Uh-huh. And so that, to me, is amazing, and I'm so happy to hear that you're, gonna, you're feeling good about that isolation. Uh-huh. Because this a hermit card, so it's our only major arcana card that we've got. And so when we pull a major arcana, to me that shows that this is actually a profoundly transformative moment for you. And it's right uh-huh. side up, which means that you're going to actually be able to enjoy all of the positive aspects of this. So uh-huh. really take that time to connect deeply to yourself crucial um but also like it's all that stuff that you've left behind whatever that is again the ten uh-huh. of swords reversed is a pretty nasty card leave mm-hmm. that stuff in the past and just mm-hmm. be happy about the fact that that is no longer a part of your life there's going to be some positive aspects of that that you're going to be able to look back at fondly but again mm-hmm. i would really advise you to not get too caught up in what you're moving away from and instead focus your energy on this beautiful new path that you're on, like I think you've completely followed your guide's advice. I would say you're definitely on the right path, especially with this hermit card coming up. To me, that shows that what you've walked away from, that's more of a short-term, nasty type of thing. And moving forward, this is going to be a Kickstarter of a few years of peaceful working on yourself, being alone in a peaceful, happy way that really, really serves you. So congratulations on this new shift. That's great. Thank you for the call, Sandy. We've got to move quickly here so we can fit everybody in. This is Pat in Missouri. Hi, Pat. Welcome to the show. Hello. Um, Sabrina, um, I would like for you to to tell me, for some reason, I don't know (laughs) why, um, it seems like here lately that I just do everything wrong. Mm. I was wondering if maybe you could uh, um, might see something in my cards that will give me some more positive attitudes. Okay, I'll see what we can get. Just shuffling a little bit here. Sometimes it takes a minute to find the right one. You don't have one of those uh, Las Vegas automatic shufflers? <laughs> That doesn't that work, work for Tarot? <laughs> oh, my God, I wish. That that would be hilarious. Okay, so I've got three cards for you. So I've got the Two of Pentacles reversed, Ace of Wands reversed, and the King of Wands reversed. And so out of these three cards, they're all reversed. So what that indicates to me is that it would really serve you to pay some attention to what it is that you are resisting. What are you pushing away? And I'm thinking there's probably some part of you that is, not paying that much attention to what actually serves you, what actually makes you happy, what are your passions. We've got two wands reversed, and the wand card is very much about fire. It's about that internal fire, the stuff that we're excited about to get up in the morning and do. Our passion, it can be a hobby, it can be a sport, it can be reading, it can be anything. But these two cards, the ace and the king, are the beginning and end of that suit. So there is something fully complete about your rejection of this part of yourself. And it might be something that you used to do that you loved that you've kind of lost touch with in recent years. But I would really, really recommend trying to remember what some of that stuff was. Because what I'm seeing here is you're super, super blocked. And I think one way to unblock yourself is to connect with your passion, is to connect with the things that make you invigorated and full of a zest for life. And I would really, really, really recommend spending some time with that. I know it might take a little bit of time to come to the forefront. I am seeing a lot of blockage here, but I do think that you would find that stabilizing, and I'm saying that because we have the Two of Pentacles here. So Pentacles is a very stabilizing suit. So what I really, really would love for you to do in the future is to engage with your passions in a way that stabilizes you, and I think that will really help uh, with some of the troubles that you're experiencing these days. Good luck. Thank you for the phone call. Let's move quickly to uh, Rebecca in Florida. Re- wait, didn't we have a Rebecca? Is this the same Rebecca in Florida? Yes. Hey, yes, it uh, is. Rebecca, Hi, I'm sorry. Again. I got to put you on hold because I've got to get to these other calls first. If we have time, we'll take yours, okay? Um, let's go to David in Missouri. Hi, David. Welcome to the show. David, are you there? Hello. <laughs> okay. Well, let's go back to Rebecca then. If David is not there, Rebecca, are you there? 
No, we made Rebecca hang up. Okay, well, we'll, we'll, okay. wait, to, we'll wait to another uh, <laughs> caller or two comes in here. Um, in the meantime, I want to ask you about recommendations for people. If somebody feels yeah. as though they want to pursue this, whether it's witchcraft or any of the other things we've been talking about tonight, how do you recommend they get started? Hmm. That's a great question. Uh, I think it is, other than just saying, hire me, <laughs> the other than the very blatant uh, self-promotion, what I would say is read as much as you possibly can about it, but good sources. Um, I'm happy to recommend some books to folks. If you pop me an email or something, I'm happy to tailor a book list to exactly what you want. And, the, and in the bibliography of my book, I also have a massive list of witchcraft books that I personally absolutely love. And the other thing I would say is don't be afraid to just try. Get your hands dirty. Like we all mess up when we're learning anything and magic and spirituality and tarot is absolutely no exception so i think one thing i'm a little bit concerned about when people start out is they read a lot of books you know they you know they have got a candle on all the time they might draw a tarot card every now and then and consult the book but they're too scared to actually give it a try and so i would love to see people who are excited and new and wanting to learn stuff about this type of work to just give it a try and it might go haywire it might not go exactly the way you want it to but you know that's how you learn and I definitely had a lot of those moments when I was much younger and much newer at the practice so I would say just really give it a try you know find some books and writers that you resonate with and also don't be afraid to work with intuition I think intuition is super super powerful and it always really concerns me and makes me a little bit sad when I see people who, you know, are too afraid to follow their own intuition and would rather just completely follow something from a book. And I think there's a really important combination of both that all practitioners kind of should have. But don't be afraid to listen to yourself, too. It's very much about learning to be in touch with your own body, listen to your own spirits, all of that stuff. Okay, <laughs> yeah, let's try to squeeze. Uh, uh, I think we have time for at least one more here. This is David, who we lost just a moment ago. Hey, David, sorry about that. Welcome back. Well, thank you. Uh, greetings, Sabrina. Hi, David. Um, I my my question or my my thought is, uh, I'm happily married uh, for 28 years, coming up Saturday, so I don't have questions of love. I don't have uh, you know concerns about money or anything because I just let that uh, sort of flow. But my thought is, um, I've tried, um, you know, prayer, visualization, and all kinds of the positive things relative to uh, serious uh, knee pain and hip pain. I'm trying to avoid uh, surgery at all possible. Am I doing something, you know, to, to block, um, you know, healing and, and energy um, to, to heal myself uh, as opposed to you know, going the other route, because I don't want surgery. So, you know, am I doing something wrong? I thought I was doing something right with visualization and prayer and things like that. So All right, so what's, what's the surgery about? Well, no, I'm trying to avoid hip and knee surgery because of that. Oh, my God. <laughs> knee and hip okay, pain. I got you, I got you, I got you. Well, first of all, my disclaimer is that I'm totally not a doctor of medicine. <laughs> I will eventually be a doctor of philosophy. Uh, so I can't provide any medical advice on that front. But in terms of um, any ways of energetically holding yourself back, I can definitely see what comes up around that one specifically. Okay, let's see here. Just so you know, Sabrina, we have about 90 seconds left. Okay. Oh, my God. Oh, that's so fast. Okay. So my suggestion to you, uh, I'm actually seeing all cards reversed, David. So I do think that you do have a bit of an energetic block. Uh, if I could leave you with something, I would say really try to get in touch with your intuition. Connect with the love that your friends and family have for you. That's going to be a really, really big uh boon and a big source of strength for you and do you really 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 connect with with your intuition like really really take a lot of time to develop those skills as much as you possibly can i really think that that will be a big uh, boon for you if you're able to do that so i do see a lot of blockages here so you're not wrong but just uh, what i would love to see for you to do is just work a little bit harder 
to build your skills, and I do think that will work out well for you. Sorry, f- yeah, sorry for rushing that, David. We're just out of time. So, Sabrina, once again, let people know um, how they can get a hold of your book, how they can yeah. find out more information about your other services, and where they can um, you know follow you on social media. Oh, thank you so much. Okay, so as you've been saying, my website is witchbody.com. That's W-I-T-C-H-B-O-D-Y.com. On Instagram, I am immateriality. I am M-A-T-E-R-I-L-A-T-Y, something like that. (laughs) I can't spell, apparently. (laughs) Uh, You guys know how it goes, but that's also linked on my website. And I do provide tarot services, so readings like today, short, long readings, and also magical consultation type of stuff. When you do a tarot card reading, is there any such thing as just pulling one card for somebody? Does that mean anything? Uh, yep, I definitely can do that. All right, can you pull one minimum. for Jason right now, please? Why am I? Because you got a new TV show coming up and stuff. And oh, jeez. I just want to see what it says. All right. <laughs> sure. First, before I do that, I just want to say that um, if anyone wants to email me, my email is Sabrina Draws, D R A W S at gmail.com, and that's also a great way to get a hold of me. Okay, so I've got one card for you, and it's an Empress Reversed, which is really interesting. So it's a major arcana card, right? And so whenever we see a major arcana card, as I've mentioned to some of the previous uh, callers, it shows a huge transition that's happening for you right now. So this this, uh, new thing that's going on for you, it's probably going to have a big impact for you for the next few years. However, what concerns me is that this card is reversed. So I feel like there is a part of you that is holding back a little bit, and this is just asking you to please not do that. (laughs) Like if there's any way that you're making yourself small or take up a little bit less space than you maybe want to, this is just like a slight nudge to say, like, actually, it might be a good idea just to exhale a little bit deeper, metaphorically, obviously, in in this new space. Like, I think that actually is something that would serve you quite well with this transition. But it it is a powerful card. The Empress is amazing as a card. It's very, very, very powerful. Well, well, thank you very much, Sabrina. And uh, we'll have to have a longer (laughs) reading at at some point. But you have yourself a great night, and thanks for coming and hanging out with us. Sabrina? Oh, thanks so much. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you. Hold on the line for me. Uh, uh, Don't hang up right away, okay? All right, that's going to do it for tonight. Thank you to Sabrina Scott. Great show. Uh, Had a great time having her on, for sure. Make sure you tune in tomorrow. we got Bill Phillips, author of Signs from the Other Side, on. Beyond Reality Radio is hosted by Jason Hawes and J.V. Johnson and produced by Alexandria Johnson and Slick Eddie Edwards for Intercom Radio. Beyond Reality Radio is distributed by Westwood One Radio Networks. Stop by our Facebook page and say hello. Follow the hosts on Facebook as well. For Jason Hawes, follow at JasonHawes.taps. For J.V. Johnson, follow at J.V.J. Paranormal. If you'd like to be a guest on Beyond Reality Radio or you have a suggestion for a guest, contact Slick Eddie Edwards at SlickEddieEdwards at gmail.com. Be sure to visit our chat room as well at beyondrealityradio.com. Thanks for listening.